So it was really telling for us that the last budget in 2021 mentioned gender over 750 times, and this year's budget only included it 18 times. How inclusive is the latest federal budget? A panel gathered Friday to analyze how the federal budget prioritizes issues that matter to women and LGBTQ2 plus S communities in Canada. The Canadian Women's Foundation and Oxfam Canada co-hosted a webinar where feminist leaders discussed the federal budget, sharing their perspectives on spending they thought was good and highlighting other areas where it fell short. Well, I would call this the budget of low-hanging fruit. Um, so we saw some small victories within it, but overall it was very thin in addressing the realities of people who are struggling the most in Canada. Deanna Sorosi with Oxfam Canada says one budget win is the promise of 100 million over five years for a federal LGBTQ2S plus action plan. However, Sorosi would have liked to see exactly how the money is going to be shared across the country. We need to see how much of that money actually will reach LGBTQ organizations and movements um, to really put a judgment call on this one. There are some announcements in this budget that may um, find their way to some small support for the racialized communities that I work with. Uh, but the reality is that they do not address the ever-growing impact of systemic racism. Shalini Konanor with the South Asian Legal Clinic of Ontario and Color of Poverty, Color of Change says the 2022 budget fails to address the impact of systemic racism in Canada. Konanur welcomes the approximate $1.9 million to complete the Federal Employment Equity Act, but says it's simply not enough. The race, gender, wage gap the inequity to access and employment insurance, and the continued discrimination in the workforce work together to simply create poorer labor market outcomes for racialized women. In this context of intersectional budgeting, there has to be a stronger focus on disability. Bonnie Brayton, CEO of Dawn Canada, says she is very disappointed there is no mention of the National Disabilities Benefit in the latest budget. Women with disabilities, as my colleagues on this call know, represent fully 24% of women in this country, and this government's known that since 2019. The rate of disability of Indigenous and Black women is above 30%. The majority of human rights are disability-related, but where is that in any of this budget? I don't see it. As for Sorosi, she says applying a feminist lens to the budget reveals missing voices and absent policies that, when included, will benefit the entire country. We hear a lot about deficits and inflation and all of it, um, but ultimately budgets is affecting people. This is about people, right? How Canada spends its money is a feminist issue. In Winnipeg, Mark Newfeld, City News.